It has been 30 minutes and they look absolutely beautiful. Wow, I gotta show you those again because this is just gorgeous. Oh my goodness, they're so, I'm so proud of you guys. You are stars. We should have a photo session right now. Today I'm going to be sharing tips that have made my bread the absolute best. And I wish I knew these tips 10 years ago and it has made the biggest difference in the texture, in the flavor, and it's just kind of blown me away. And so anyways, I wanted to share these with you because when people taste my bread and then they go and make their bread and they are following my tutorial, which I have a tutorial on how to make the bread from beginning to end. And then they will say time and time again, my bread did not taste like yours, like what's going on. So these are the tips that you could be forgetting if your bread is not turning out top notch. So first of all, and I did write these down so I don't get lost in a tangent. The first one is the autolise, which we can call this soaking the grain. So when you put everything in except the yeast, no yeast at this time, you're gonna put everything in there, including, which I'm gonna back up for a second, because the egg and the lecithin, like this, you want sunflower lecithin, I'll put the link in below if you would like to get some of this. I do not recommend soy lecithin. We wanna make sure it is non-GMO, and the sunflower lecithin has just been a really good friend for my bread. Uh, also, the egg has lecithin in it as well. And I have just noticed a big difference. I have made bread with just an egg, but then I have made bread with the lecithin and the egg, and the difference in texture and flavor is just worth both. Not something that you have to do, but for the best bread, in my opinion, use both. One egg for a two pound recipe, and two tablespoons of the sunflower lecithin. The other thing that has made such a big, big difference is using olive oil. So I used to think that butter was the way to go because I love butter and that buttery flavor, but olive oil is really going to give it that nicer texture, um, less dense, and I get mine from the Palmetto Olive Oil because I know that theirs is top notch and I'll put that link in the description below as well if you would like to buy your olive oil from there. So what I did is I got the butter infused olive oil. So now I have the best of both worlds. And if you would like to get some, you can use my code. I'll put that down in the link in the description below as well. And then you can get 15% off your first time order. The other thing that has made the biggest difference is the auto lease or the soaking and that is between 15 minutes and an hour. So I typically do mine somewhere around 30 to 45 minutes, but anywhere within that time. And what this is doing, it is giving the wheat time to soak up the liquid and break it down so that it's not as dense and then your bread turns out so much fluffier and that gluten starts to unleash. Don't add your yeast at this time. When we add yeast, yeast is ready to go. So you can end up with bread that is overproofed. So we're going to do the auto lease or the soaking without the yeast. We're going to add that later. And this auto lease is going to make the biggest difference. And honestly, you just get it ready and go about your business. You can be cleaning your house, doing your laundry, just set a timer and then come back to it. So it doesn't cause you to have to be involved for a lot of time. It's time to add the rest of the flour and the yeast. I'm going to add a little flour on top and then the yeast right on top of that. You don't want to add the yeast until this step because the yeast is active and it's ready to start proofing. We don't want to overproof. Okay, the other trick to this, I'm going to say this why this machine's not going, is you do not want it to get too dry. It's going to be on, we're going to err on the side of caution, which would be slightly sticky. <laughs> I 
like to do a clean sweep every now and then on the outside. But the Artiste has this, it has this that wipes the center and my other Bosch did not have this. And this is a game changer for sure. It's amazing, absolutely amazing. You wanna add your flour slowly. So you don't get too much. You can always add more, but it's hard to take it away. We see it start to pull away from the sides and you know you're getting close to the amount of flour that you need. And it doesn't need much more. We're almost there. Okay, I'm gonna let it go. Um, it, it, see, it's just a touch sticky. It's just a touch sticky, so I'm gonna let it go. And since this is a lot of flour, this is four pounds, we're going to let this knead for 10 minutes. Kneading that dough long enough, you can Google the window pane test if you would like to test your dough to make sure that it is ready. But when I am kneading in my Bosch mixer, or I also have an Artiste, mixer and i am doing that two pound recipe i am mixing for six minutes if you are kneading with your hands you're going to need longer and it could be 20 to 25 minutes it's just going to take longer to get that gluten to really stretch and do its job and break everything down if you double your recipe you're going to need a longer knead time so if i double my recipe then i'm kneading that dough for about 10 minutes but it's really easy to just Google the window pane test and test it if you want to. I can pretty much just feel mine and I know by now what it feels like. You also wanna make sure that you're not adding too much flour. If you're used to what dough feels like with white flour, pastry flour, any of those store-bought flours, this is a different ball game and we don't want it to feel like Play-Doh. We wanna back off just a little bit so it's slightly sticky. So now I am putting it in the oven to proof and I'm going to allow this, unless it just goes crazy and proofs really high, really fast. I'm gonna let this proof for 45 minutes and my oven has a proof option and so it is at 100 degrees. You don't have to do that, but because I have that option, I am using it. You can simply put it on the counter and cover it with a towel. You just wanna make sure that it's not somewhere cold. I'm gonna set my timer for 45 minutes and go about my day. Proof time. So I typically allow mine to go about 45 minutes. There are some factors that will make a difference. The temperature in your home. My oven has a proof option and it's 100 degrees. So I'm proofing mine 100 degrees. So if you have something consistent, then that does help. But you know, warm counter, you know, put a, a towel over it, that's fine. Um, just keep an eye on it because you don't wanna overproof. And basically what we're looking for is for that dough to have doubled in size. This is after, let me see if I can get in there. I want you to see. This is after 30 minutes and it is looking beautiful. I'm gonna give it a little pat because it deserves some love. I'm gonna go ahead and let it go another 10 minutes and then it will be time to get it ready for the loaf pans. Isn't she lovely? Isn't she wonderful? That's how I feel about this. So the 45 minutes in the oven, big, beautiful dough, and that's a very important step. So if you don't have time to do all of these steps, don't let that stop you from making the bread. Because at the end of the day, we're gonna have healthy bread and the health really does matter. We don't, wanna, we don't want deterrence to keep us from doing it, but this is so you have the most delicious loaf, the most fluffy, best texture and I know because I've done it all the other ways. I have i didn't know about Autolise. I didn't know about the 45 minute proof time twice. 
I didn't know about turning on the oven while the bread is still in the oven. And so we're going to talk about all of that in a minute. Go ahead and put it in the bread pans. And now we're going to proof it again, probably for another 45 minutes again until it's doubled in size. So you do want to keep an eye on it. It has been 30 minutes and they look absolutely beautiful. So I'm going to go ahead and start the oven. Here's another tip turn the oven on while the loaves are in there because that preheat time, uh, I just realized I, <laughs> forget this, I wear this makeup that's all these whatevers and you spread it out and it's supposed to make your face not look flat. So anyway, don't mind me, but you, um, this will give it extra, I can't take myself seriously right now. This is gonna give it extra oomph in the proofing. So it's like a final proof. So I'm going to go ahead and turn the oven on. I bake personally at 350. I know some people bake at 375. I don't. I do 350. And we're going to set the timer for 30 minutes. It's not going to be done in 30 minutes, but that's going to help me remember. And then we're going to stick the thermometer in there so that we can get an internal reading because the internal temperature tells you when it's done. And I used to ignore this, or I actually, I used to not know about this feature. Why am I in this drawer? Aluminum foil. I didn't know about this feature and I would pull my bread out too soon because I was afraid it was gonna be over baked, but it wasn't, it was under baked and that doughiness just does not help to give it the right flavor and texture and you would not believe how much difference it makes it's like the difference between night and day so i'm going to cover it in foil so it doesn't burn i'm going to go fix this and i'll be right back if you do not have egg in your bread then you for some reason it doesn't brown too much like this does. Mine browns fast and it's because it has egg in it. Um, you know, so what I do is I put the aluminum foil on for the first 30 minutes and then I pull it off for the last five or 10 so that it will get nice and golden. But I don't want it to be burnt. No burning. I am spraying water. Spraying your oven with water because dough loves moisture. And so just doing a spray every now and then is just gonna help that proof a little bit more, giving a better texture, a little bit more fluff, and it is so worth it. So I give a couple of mists during the proof time, and then I give a few mists during the bake time. The next tip is allowing proof time while your oven is turned on to preheat. So don't take the bread out when the oven is preheating. You're going to leave it in there because it's gonna give it another pop while that oven is preheating. And I give it another spray while the oven is preheating. I bake mine at 350. I know some people bake theirs at 375. 350 just works really well for me. And I go ahead and set my timer for 30 minutes, but usually it's never done in 30 minutes. Everyone's oven is different. The last and final tip is knowing the internal temperature for your bread. This was the biggest game changer for me because I was always afraid I was going to burn the bread. I was gonna dry out and overcook the bread. And so I usually erred on the side of it wasn't done and then it would be a little bit gooey. It would, it would be a little bit more dense. And the flavor, I never would want to eat a peanut butter and jelly on that bread. I would never want to make a grilled cheese on that bread. I really only wanted it for toast. I enjoyed two things, fresh out of the oven or toast. Well, that's not my story anymore. I will eat anything and everything on this bread and I actually prefer it over anything because it is so amazing, but the internal temperature matters so much. So when I first started taking that internal temperature, I would go for about 180, but I have found that I actually enjoy it more 
between 190 to 200, somewhere in that range. And I'm gonna show you what I purchased. Love them both. My son bought me this one and it's amazing and it's a meat thermometer. But what I like about this is that you can put it in and I'll put it in at 30 minutes. I tested it 30 minutes. Um, you put it in and you can close the door and have this on the outside. But since then, I learned that there is another one that has an alarm. So I set the temperature I want the bread to be and this alarm goes off so I don't have to keep watching it. So now I know when my bread reaches the temperature that I want it to be, and then I can come and get my bread out. So it's really magical and I'll put this in the link below. And just so you know, when you guys purchase things through my links, typically you're saving money because I have promo codes. And if you're not saving extra, you're paying the same thing you would have been paying anyways. And you help me be able to continue to get you um, more information. So by supporting me, you're helping to support my channel and I definitely appreciate it. But all of these tips and tricks have just made the best bread and I love to share this bread and I'll share this bread with friends and family and they're like, I want this bread. And so I'm like, well, if you want the next time I make it, um, I'm selling it now and they're buying it over and over again. So they love it and, it and they know that they're getting that nutrition plus deliciousness. And these are the things that have made the biggest difference. So just to recap, Autolise, lecithin, checking your need time, your proof time, turning the oven on to allow it in there while it's preheating to give even more boost to the proof, and then spraying your oven with the water and then last internal temperature. So a lot of people like theirs more like 200. If you are doing a bread that is that has milk in it, then you might wanna go all the way up to 210. And for sourdough, you definitely want 210. It's like the magic number. So I'm coming out with a recipe, a tutorial for sourdough using fresh milled flour soon and I'll get that content out to you as soon as possible but I want to thank you guys so much for being here this means so much to me I never knew that this would be something that brought me so much joy but it does and it's because of you um, that just makes it all worth it so thanks for watching and you guys have a great day and if you have some tips that I haven't mentioned please leave a comment below. I love to read your comments. I love to know that you're here. So if nothing else, just say hi. So thanks for watching. I hope this has helped and you guys have a great day.